Hello, I'm Luke Darcy. Welcome to the 2013 Wash Up for the Demons. Damien Barrett is with me, and it was really another horrible footy season for the Melbourne Football Club. It was, Darcy, and you could actually, unfortunately for Melbourne, see it coming a long way out. Their trading of last year was woeful, abysmal by who they identified. Then got to round one and it just got worse. And we've lost key people, coach, CEO, president. We'll touch on that soon. But just it couldn't have got worse. Um, and there's no great sign in the near future. We'd like to talk about a season highlight uh, in the wash-up. And Melbourne's hasn't come yet. It'll come Sunday night at about 6 o'clock <laughs> when the final siren sounds on their last game for the year, Damo. And I, I mean that in all seriousness. They only positive thing will be this year is over. Yep. And hopefully we can erase it from our memory. Hopefully the players can erase it from their memory. And they can just get into the summer sort out the football club, sort out who the new coach is, and hopefully uh, some positives for them next year. Yeah, well, I can find an individual positive, Darcy. It's Nathan Jones. I, I feel the way he has stood up this particular year when his team and all around him on and off field were, were crumbling. This man stood up throughout the entirety of the season. and He, he did it tough, um, but every single game he could walk off and say, I, I gave my all. And, and sometimes he's in the best players, sometimes he wasn't. But unlike a few teammates and, and unlike a, a few players who've uh, fallen by the wayside around him, he tried every single week to us. And I, I've got a lot of time for this bloke and the way he's gone about his footy in 2013. Yeah, can't argue with that. I think uh, he deserves uh, credit, as you said, for the effort that he's put in. Season low light, uh, unfortunately, 12 times they were beaten by more than 10 goals and blowouts of 148 points, 122 points you can see there. Uh, it just erodes away the whole fabric, the whole essence of a football club demo when you get smashed so consistently. Mm. And that's their first priority next year. Find a way to be competitive and yeah. get yourselves involved in games. Whether they win or not, you just can't get smashed anymore. No, you can't. And I don't know where to start with the low light dar. So what I have done here is just identify what's happened by way of official. I mean, you've lost a coach, you've lost a CEO, and you've lost a, a chairman. And when you actually say it quickly, it doesn't mean much, but just absorb it. This is the, you know, the, the Mark Neal departure. This, this happened to us. 18 months into a three-year yeah. deal, and it probably could have and, and maybe should have happened even earlier than that. It was just a, a bomb decision from the start and, and played out that way. And, you know, you've got uh, Don McClarty there, who, who held the club together to a point. But in the end, footy wasn't his go. Look, very good man, very good businessman, but just not a good footy club president. And look, they've got some things in place now which seem to, to be on the right track, but there's, you can't just lose those three key people in the one year and immediately click the fingers and make it all go away. I don't think the Demons are going to break the budget with handing out too many Christmas bonuses, so Damo, but there's one man I would like to single out, and that's Jeremy Howe. He's provided some of the great highlights for the year. Yep. And in the right environment, he might end up being a really, really good player and uh, does this better than anyone else. How about the landing? Just takes a hanger every week and then just gave a little bit more uh, at ground level. Can kick goals. Uh, is he high-end talent, Darcy? I mean, no, he's, he's spectacular role is, is as good as anyone's, but is he high-end footy talent? I think it's a bit hard to judge until yeah. we get the support around him, but I, I think talent-wise, if you can do that, it means you can play the game. And I, I really like him. I think he's... Uh, you know, consistently, it's a bit more than just the marks. We love showing them because they're great, but I think he's a really talented player and deserves uh, some credit for what he's done. Yeah, my um, Christmas bonus goes to Peter Jackson, Dar. So the man who, who took over the club as CEO initially on an interim basis, he's since committed now for some time. Just to make sure they don't lose him, Dust. To me, he, he's a man who's got a vision. It's going to take a long time. He's aware of the problems. He scaled it right back. They've got to keep him for a long time, Darcy. Any he's chance the that'll happen, Damo? Is the AFL's uh, man they like to put into their most yep. difficult situations? Is there any chance he'll become enamoured with it and stay for five years? Uh, that's not his intention. I, I think he's going to give them two years, and two years will be enough at least to get it back on track. I mean, that, that's his plan right now, and I, I don't think he could do it for much more than two years because it's, it's horrific, Darcy. What, what he's uncovered by way of books and, and general keeping, just general business keeping, it, it's not good, and he's still yet to hit the bottom of, of what he's found. Chopping block uh, started mid-season, as you pointed out, Damo, with uh, the CEO and the coach and a few others along the way. Uh, for me, I think uh, it's the recycled players that they tried to get into the yep. club. It didn't work. Uh, I understand the theory behind it, but uh, Shannon Burns, Cam Peterson, uh, Gillies, David Roden, uh, maybe an asterisk alongside Chris Dawes, but they gave up a fair bit to get Chris yep. Dawes and paid a lot for it. But Overs. the uh, recycled players, Dame, are not a good chapter in Melbourne's history. Well, I'm glad you can understand the logic behind it, because I, I couldn't and, and still don't and, and didn't at the time and was very critical of them at the time, and I just think they, they blew that whole trade period up. That's my um, chopping block person, though, is Colin Sylvia. 
I empathise with a guy who's got talent and has to be forced to produce that talent uh, in a really bad team. I think it's time for him to have a look elsewhere. And I think here we're better, better for it and benefit from it. And I think Melbourne will too. He's got a little bit of currency left. So not, not high-end stuff, but I reckon they can get something for him. And I think he'll be better. Let's look to where they can improve uh, in season 2014. And it's almost across the entire business, demo. But I, I think uh, they've got to start developing their own players. Here's the under-23 Demons. There is some quality there. Mm. Trengo has to become a good player, uh, good enough to uh, be appointed captain. How we just point out, Hogan is an absolute star, 17-year-old that will play next year. He's, up, he's old enough. Blees, I really like. Tom McDonald should be a good player. Watts has got to stay and become the player he should. Tumpus, Jack Viney will be. So yeah. when you see those names like that, Darcy, did you see hope? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But what hasn't happened in the past? They haven't developed their own players. They haven't yeah. improved. Some of them have gone backwards. Colin Sylvia is a, is a case in point you just mentioned. He, he should be a, a very, very good player, pushing to be in an All-Australian side. Instead, you're talking about trading him out of the system. So there's the list there. You've got to start developing them. Darcy, the appointment of the co-captaincy arrangement with uh, Jack Trengove and, and Jack Grimes. Um, I just didn't like it. They're too young and, and too injured in Grimes' case and, and Trengo's still too developing. Remove it. Get rid of it. There's one man now, a standout for that role, and it's, it's Nathan Jones. Has to be done. And make a decision early. Make it before Christmas. He's the new captain of this footy club. Go and let those younger kids go and ply their footy trade without the burden of leadership of a very ordinary footy club. I tend to agree with you again on that one, Damo. I think that was a thing that uh, misfired as well. Let's look ahead to next year, Damo. Have you got any light for Melbourne supporters? Any joy coming their way next year? I don't, and that, that's unfortunate for Melbourne. It's going to be two, three, four years away, but uh, I actually see them going down, Darcy, as bad as that sounds. I just can't see anything happening immediately. And look, Hogan's going to come in, but I can't see that changing the win-loss that they've had this year. Yeah, I'm a bit with you, Damo. I think there's more pain to come for Melbourne supporters. I think a new coach will come in, maybe clear the decks again a little bit more, just play every young player on the list. Yep. And as you're developing, you do get hammered a bit more, but that is where they have to head to. For Melbourne, thanks, Damo. That's the wash-up for the Melbourne Football Club in season 2013.